What is it, Captain? I believe it's a controller. Controller, sir? Ancient chimpanzees used to use them for games and stuff. You know, activities done for fun instead of productivity. Barbaric. Barbaric indeed. Connect. Fetch that controller, please. Retrieving pleasure controller. No, 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 no! Not that controller. It's for the... It's for the, the kink in my... The kink in my back. Um, fetch... The other controller. Stupid bitch. And to think we'd all still be using these if it wasn't for one man. The Supreme Leader? The Supreme Leader. Don Matrick. And so our story begins where another story ends. The great console wars of the seventh generation. The PlayStation 3 versus the Xbox 360. Black versus white, red versus blue, and lots of graves filled with plastic doo-doo. I have cancer now. The battle was long, and the battle was hard. Real hard. It was an arms race to produce the best console exclusives. And despite Xbox's initial momentum, Many an unforeseen catastrophe cursed their campaign. The Red Ring Plague, the Great Game Starvation, and the breaking of Microsoft's HQ via Sony's many groundbreaking exclusives. God of War, Metal Gear 4, and lots more. Devastating Microsoft's defenses and converting many a gamer to the dark side. What do you think of that? And as the dust faded and the ashes cleared, Sony stood victorious. Well, kind of victorious. See, while the PlayStation and the Xbox duked it out for console supremacy, Nintendo was busy doing what they do best. Ignoring everyone and being weird. So barbaric. The seventh generation console wars occurred within the known gaming world right here. But as these titans of industry battled for resources, Nintendo turned their gaze to an unexplored world. For beyond the loot box hills and over the Minecraft mountains lay a kingdom ripe for the plucking, a people untouched by the outside influences of the gaming world, with wallets fat and expectations expectations low, a people so bored, so pedestrian, that they will gladly eat whatever shit you shovel towards them. You see trash, they see treasure. I am of course talking about the casual gamer market. I'm winning and having a stroke. Your grandma, your grandpa, your uncle, the boomers. These people populate the casual kingdom, and although it marks a rather small percentage of the gaming map, their population and average earnings are quite high. These people have disposable income, low expectations, and a great fear of anything involving joysticks. So naturally, with the advent of Wii weapon technology, namely motion control, the Nintendo Kingdom was able to invade these lands, conquer these people, and destroy their TVs, selling over 100 million units. That's 100 million snapped backs, 100 million broken televisions, and 100 million bowling balls thrown into the bowels of society, the dumpster, a garbage man's greatest nightmare. 
And with Nintendo dominating the casual kingdom and Sony surrounding the Xbox capital, Microsoft fervently looked around for strategic pivots. The war had exhausted them, their resources, and their ideas. The granaries were empty, the barracks were burned, and the super soldiers were AWOL. I'm the chief of the dance floor now. I'm sorry. And in their desperation, Microsoft essentially had two options. One, completely change their business model, wow. reshift focus, and reallocate resources towards new markets. Or two, make good video games. A tough choice. So King Bill thought long, and King Bill thought hard. One or two, invade or save. And with sweat dripping from his furrowed brow, the tension was palpable. But Bill is a man of action. Bill is a man of brilliance. Bill is a man of billions. And so he knew exactly what to do. I want to do this, but with the Microsoft twist. We take the Wii and we paint it green. Huh? Huh? So the lads over at Microsoft HQ got hard to work, lubricating the war machine with their blood, sweat, and tears for this new technological frontier, taking their brightest minds off Microsoft Office and moving them to their new office, research and development, where dreams go to die in pursuit of others' dreams. The focus? Motion control technology. Well, bam! The future of gaming and the end of the all mighty controller. Microsoft was silently moving their lidless gaze away from the muddied, war-torn lands of the hardcore gaming world and towards what they perceived to be greener pastures. I mean, the grass is literally greener. And so the Xbox team began developing a master weapon designed to dominate all life, wallets, and well-being, bringing both casual and hardcore players to their knees to offer their cash and more importantly, personal data to their new green overlords. And this weapon was to be called Project Natal. But here's the problem. For far too many people, the controller is a barrier separating video game players from everyone else. Can we go beyond the controller? Can we make you the controller? We can. Help me. But any great army or any great weapon needs a great leader, because with great power comes great abilities. And up to this point, when Peter Moore had led the Xbox forces, he'd survived the Red Ring of Death, he'd led the Blitzkrieg against Sony, and he even sacrificed his own body with many very real and very questionable Halo tattoos. Right here. So needless to say, he's dedicated. But obsession obscures vision. You lose perspective. You can't see the whole picture. Like, you probably see McDonald's, but if you zoom out, it's actually just Leonardo da Vinci. And so for this new technology, Emperor Gates wanted a new face. A real go-getter. A man's man and a woman's wet dream. Enter one Don Matrick. Stud. He's got all the credentials. EA exec? Check. Gamer? Check. Sex icon? Checkity check check. And so Don Matrick was given the keys to the Xbox kingdom. He would wield Xbox's new weapon, this Project Natal, and lead the Xbox back to its former glory. But greatness requires action, and so Don immediately got to work uh, by putting the peasants to work. His first action being to revive perhaps the oldest yet most potent weapon of any great nation, the propaganda machine. I'd like you to meet a boy called Milo. He's a character that can recognize us, he can recognize our faces, he can recognize our voices, he can recognize emotions in us. And this works today, now.
That was a lie. So in his first executive decision, Don Matrick dumped mountains of hype upon the free people of the gaming world. The trailers dropped, teasers tossed, and lies lobbed. The recipe for any good hype train. Choo choo. And this train is headed for the epicenter of hype. The entrance to gamers' hearts, minds, and butts. What else but E3? Sonny, that looks <laughs> totally... That is amazing. So it's E3 2009, and Microsoft announces their latest creation, Project Natal, the terminator of tendinitis, the conqueror of controllers, and the best view for watching you poo-poo. Bill? The showcase focused on a multitude of different ideas, the main selling point being you are the controller, a direct shot at Nintendo's face, and a cause for war. E3 2009 was Microsoft's coming out party, leveraging big names like Steven Spielberg and Glasses Guy to add weight and authority to this new project. I mean, if the guy that did this is gonna back that, then you know it ain't gonna be whack. <sighs> All right, so there's our elephant. It ended up being whack. But whack? can be good, and so E3 2009, although vague, made enough promises to add a substantial amount of fuel to the hype train by claiming to allow all sorts of outlandish features, voice recognition, body recognition, even object recognition. Got a spare Ooh. sword lying around? Now it's in your game. Oh. I don't want to play anymore. And these features dumped enough upvotes, likes, and retweets to send this baby to the moon, promising hardcore games for hardcore gamers and casual games for casual gamers. It even featured an AI robot boy for all the weirdos out there. His name is Milo, and he's trapped in this TV. So listen, I was thinking today you should let me beat you at football again. That is if you finished your homework. You have finished your school project. You're free! Go! Milo? I'm a monster. This was perhaps the most intriguing aspect of the 2009 showcase. Microsoft was claiming to have invented a real AI with real intelligence. Oh. Now we can barely do this in 2023, so back in 2009 when the peak of modern technology was this, the idea of interacting with a real artificial intelligence was not only fantastical, but truly unbelievable. Ah. Unbelievable. And rightfully so, you shouldn't believe it because it was a lie. Gotcha. So E3 2009 closes with a lot of mystery and a lot of promises. The perfect equation for maximum hype. Mystery times trailers divided by lies equals hype. Everyone write down the rules and wake the fuck up. But the project was far from finished and so the Xbox team retreated back to their caves to hibernate and let that hype stew simmer. Days faded to weeks, weeks led to months, and before you could say Xbox on, a year had passed. E3. 2010, Don Matrick and the boys emerged from their slumber and it quickly became clear he'd been busy as armies far and wide stood at his back. You had dancers from distant lands, influencers from the inlands, even the gods of modern society. Celebrities blessed Don and the Xbox with their presence. It quickly became clear, Xbox? had been recruiting. I like to play these games, and uh, but now to play without a controller and look down and figure out what button do I press when. Have you seen the controller for it? I haven't yet. It's you. You oh, are the controller. Really? It's groundbreaking. You don't have to hold anything. You don't have to be on anything. And it's a major workout. It's pretty intense. Yeah, man, I, I love video games. I play them all the time. I love it when the, that guy, that guy jumps and he, does that thing and yeah I don't play video games I was I was paid to be here I'm 
sorry. And so, through the endless coffers of Microsoft's advertising budget and lots of animal sacrifice, Don Matrick earned the favor of both man and god. There were Nickelodeon celebs, there was Cirque du Soleil, there was even a wild Instagram star. Someone grab my master ball. But first, what in God's name are we gonna name this godly item? It's gotta be something that connects to the audience. Something that screams Xbox. Xbox 720. And so the Xbox Connect was born, and the gaming world was changed forever by making you, yes, you, the controller. But unlike E3 2009, Don and the Xbox team came bearing real gifts like tangible games, actual features, and clear concepts for consumers right, to consume. Perfect. You had connectimals, sports, dancing. It focused focused on all the things that traditional console gamers don't care about, meaning the Kinect was right on track. Choo-choo again. Now, besides the fact that most of these demos were, how should I put this, fake, it didn't help that only the first 30 minutes of E3 2010 featured traditional games like Halo, Gears, and Call of Duty, while the last hour focused on these new, clearly scripted Kinect projects. Xbox clearly thought they could capture both audiences simultaneously, draining their stores of goodwill earned through Halo 3 to feed the hardcore audience while also using Kinect Adventures to enslave a new audience. Because when you are the controller, you're bound to do controller things. Like the Kinect has got me stuck, and now it's trying to f- Xbox, please stop taking off my pants. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. God. Damn it. Targeting two audiences simultaneously is a high-risk, high-reward play as it potentially yields more conquered land faster, meaning you can collect more resources, exploit more people, and color in those imaginary lines with your face. <laughs> but like any high-reward play, it has a low probability of success. Your armies and resources are thinned out in the process because you must send 15 celebrities to the castle casual front while also using your stores of gamer snacks to feed the hardcore theater. <laughs> It's logistically complex and honestly a lose-lose for everybody. It's called the Hitler strategy and it's really dumb. I'm gonna invade Russia. E3 of 2010 was the second straight year that Microsoft spent more time talking about Netflix, sports, and game shows than investing in new, interesting video game titles. They clearly saw the future of consoles as being a one-stop shop for all entertainment needs a way for the whole family to disconnect through the connect. This is the exact strategy that ultimately lost them the console war with Sony, who prioritized groundbreaking exclusives for groundbreaking players. But Don Matrick is no dummy. He knows how to make money. Remember, he worked for EA. This guy knows how to sell you something that isn't worth anything. Still better than Madden. And so, on November 4th, 2010, the Xbox Connect was released, meaning now there is only one thing left to do. Wait. It's the calm before the storm. The breath before the plunge. Would the Kinect manage to connect to people's wallets, or would it fail and end the Xbox kingdom as we know it? Don sat in his office dreading the news, anxieties whispering sweet lies into his head. Your career is Locked. over. Oh my god. Nobody's gonna love you. You're gonna get fired. You're gonna get Bill's fired. gonna come down here and he's gonna touch you. Touch your butt. It's gonna be weird. And ring ring, it's Big Daddy Bill, and he is very pleased. The Xbox Connect 
was a success, selling over 8 million copies in its first two months, making it one of the fastest selling consoles of all time. Don had done the impossible. He had successfully invaded the Nintendo Kingdom with an unstoppable army being directed by an immovable object, a vanguard of old people running in place to smash all those scary controllers with those beastly buttons. It's like the Vikings of old, but there's no Vikings and everyone's old. I've fallen and I can't get up. Welcome to Valhalla, bitch. I'm sorry, that was rude. It's honestly hard to comprehend just how successful those first few months were. The Kinect helped reinvigorate Xbox 360 sales. What? It made Microsoft profitable again, and believe it or not, Kinect Adventures was actually Xbox's best-selling game. What did you say? Not Halo, and not Gears. But numbers are liars, and just because something sells well, doesn't mean it's it's received well, and the Kinect, although popular, was really unpopular. It featured a substantially weaker, smaller, and dumber library of games than what was initially promised. Many of the capabilities we saw in the 2009 showcase were completely gutted as Microsoft decided to reduce processing power to create better margins. And it worked. The Kinect retailed for around $150 and costed about $50 to make. Those are damn good margins. Too good because when you go cheap, you get cheap. Kinect? Call the wife. Killing wife. <laughs> That'll do. This barren landscape of games quickly relegated the Kinect to the closet to do nothing but collect dust and listen to your conversation. It was a huge failure from the consumer's perspective, but for Microsoft, they just saw the numbers. Nobody reads Metacritic anyway, and so inside the echo chamber of Microsoft, it was full steam ahead for the motion control wave. I mean, just look at that profit. Bills got a billionaire boner. Gross. So fuck the controller and let's just use my body, baby. And so with the conclusion of the seventh generation of consoles, two new super weapons emerged onto the scene. The Xbox One and the PlayStation 4. Microsoft versus Sony once again. We're gearing up for war, but with better technology and more realistic bloodshed. And although things in the Xbox Kingdom seemed quite nice, a cold wind from the east carried whispers and shadows of a doubt. A box that is designed right. to use uh, an online state. Mm -hmm. And fortunately we have a product for people who aren't able to get some form of connectivity. It's called Xbox 360. Rumors began to spread in 2011 and 2012 of the next Xbox featuring a litany of questionable features. A. The Xbox must always be on. B. The Xbox must always be online. And C. You must show your b-hole for access. Okay, that last one's not true, but it should be true. But perhaps the most egregious rumor of them all, reselling games would be strictly prohibited through the use of activation codes. Wanna lend your favorite game to your favorite friend? That's illegal. Oh, you sold your game to your local GameStop? That's fraud. Wanna play your game on your other Xbox? Die, criminal. Please don't. <laughs> Looks like you lost your head. I gotta get a new job. And bam, one of the cornerstones of the video game industry reselling games would be gone, if true. But remember, truth is unimportant. Headlines are what stick, and it doesn't help when top executives do the one thing they should never, ever do, tweet. 
leaked, and so all these rumors created a perfect storm. Storm 1, the hardcore traditional Xbox audience had slowly been soured on the company through continual neglect, and Storm 2, a hurricane of negative press surrounding the Xbox One, and so merging them created a super storm of negativity, halting that hype train with winds up to 40 tweets per hour, a devastating catastrophe. But Microsoft still has the most important element on their side. Time. And with that all-important Xbox One reveal on the horizon, now is their chance to clear the air, course correct, and establish exactly what the Xbox One would and hopefully wouldn't feature. And unsurprisingly, it's an unmitigated disaster. For the first time, you and your TV are going to have a relationship. It's going to recognize my name, my voice, my friends, my family, my movies, my butthole. Wait, is that, is that really my line? And if that trailer wasn't bad enough, the first piece of media Microsoft's brand new console featured is the price is right. Whoa. Not Halo, not Gears, not even Connectimals, but rather a game show that only your granny cares about. But it gets even worse. All Xbox Ones would automatically include the Kinect 2, meaning not only would Bill Gates be watching your every move, but more importantly, the price would reflect that bundling, causing the Xbox One to come in at a whopping $4.99. Ouch, that's $100 more than a PS4, but instead of getting God of War, you get to hit the floor. Ouch again. This was the final nail in the coffin. The Xbox One was already limping towards the starting line, but then asking for $4.99 was like pulling out the starting gun and shooting yourself in the foot. It's just not a winning strategy. You wanna go? Is that a no? So this decision drove all the peasants out of the Xbox Kingdom and towards the safety of Sony's dark empire. And boy, did Sony open the floodgates. Because at their E3 press conference, not only did they showcase epic games, but they continually kicked Xbox while it was already down, ensuring their death through a few simple sentences. A. PS4 would have no used game restrictions. B. PS4 does doesn't require constant internet connection, and see the headshot, the PS4 is $399. Boom. And just like that, the Xbox One was dead. Let's rob him. Please don't. So Xbox lay there in a pool of its own blood, dying, seeing visions of past lives when suddenly a shadow approached. A familiar foe came for a second helping of blood. It was Sony, who was back and proceeded to do what any great conqueror would do. Teabag Xbox's lifeless corpse with perhaps the most savage video game commercial of all time. This is how you share your games on PS4. Thanks. PlayStation. Hi, I'd like to report a murder. This commercial demonstrates just how hard Xbox shot itself in the foot. Sony literally made the premier selling point of their next generation console, just lending a game to a friend, something that has always and should always be done. It was like Microsoft just opened the gates to the enemies outside and said, come on in. Take what you need and burn the rest. And boy, did Sony do that. So what happened? Well, essentially the success of the Xbox Kinect went on to bait Microsoft to pour their resources more heavily into the casual market. But with the emergence of the iPhone and mobile games, the casual audience was long gone. 
they had sailed to distant shores never to return. And so, the PlayStation 4 would go on to sell double what the Xbox One did, if the numbers can be believed, and the Xbox brand as a whole would be deeply tarnished forever, all because of one item, the Kinect. Microsoft's worst success and your grandmother's worst nightmare. Grandma? Grandma? Yeah, I should have gotten her a wee.